Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. It is the most wonderful time of the year. Why is that? Well, because Bowman Draft is releasing on December 7th, one of the biggest sets of the 2020 card season, and you have just landed on the best and most in-depth set guide and review that you will find anywhere on the internet. So let's find out right now if this 2020 Bowman Draft set is one that you should get or one that you should completely forget. It's time to review 2020 Bowman Draft. So as we wind down the 2020 baseball card season, we get one of the biggest sets of the year, 2020 Bowman Draft. And in this in-depth set guide and review, what we try to get to is the one cent exclusive sensational set rating. What is that, you ask? Well, what I do is I take Bowman Draft and I break it out into 10 different categories. Everything from card quality to cost value to auto checklist, you name it, it is on there. And each of those categories gets a score of 1 to 10. Then we add all those scores up, which brings us to our exclusive sensational set rating that allows us to see how good this set really is and allows us to compare it to all of the sets that have been released in the 2020 card season. So how do we get to that? Well, first we cover off on the set highlights of Bowman drafts. Uh, I'll cover off on the key buy on the on the different buying formats that you can get it in. I'll show you all of the key cards that you can pull from the checklist. We'll cover off on the parallels, the inserts, the autos, and then I'll even break it down to tell you what teams you should be targeting in team breaks that you're getting into for Bowman Draft. Then I'll give my opinions on who should be collecting this, who should stay away, what the overall positives are, what the negatives are, and that brings us to our one cent sensation set rating and then at the very end we will compare it to all of the other sets that have been released in the 2020 card season so let's hop right in first thing to know about bowman draft is it is the final 2020 bowman release of the 2020 card season and it features all of uh, not all but a lot of the 2020 draft picks from the mlb draft that happened in june it is the third of three flagship releases for Bowman, and it features a 200 card base set checklist, and there is an identical 200 card chrome version of that checklist. It does feature the very first cards of players that were selected in the June 2020 draft. That's a very important thing, as a lot of those end up being key cards later on down the road. Bowman Draft is actually in its 21st year of production. It used to be called Bowman Draft Picks and Prospects. I think they changed that back in 2016, but it is a very mature set, very popular set within the hobby. For the Parallel Rainbow, for the paper cards, we're going to have a 9-color base card Parallel Rainbow and an 11-color Chrome card Parallel Rainbow for this year's set. Also to note, there are image variation cards in the set. And with the autos, the thing that's going to be most notable is a lot of them are going to be from the 2020 draftees from the MLB draft. And that's what makes this one of Bowman's most valuable sets. All these players get drafted. This is going to be their first cards in a major league baseball uniform. And Bowman draft is only available in hobby format. So this year we have the hobby HTA boxes and then these super jumbo boxes. We'll cover off on that in a minute. And there are three new insert sets this year there's the 20 for 20 the applied pressure and glimpses of greatness and all of those actually have autographed versions as well and then new for this year there is also a top of the class box topper all of them are numbered 99 or less and those are available in hobby boxes and yes you can get parallels and yes some of them are autographed so let's cover off on the buying formats. Like I said, it is only available for hobby. So we'll cover off on the hobby HTA format first. So that is going to have 12 packs, 32 cards per pack, which gives you a large 384 total cards. Current price on that about 380 bucks right now. So your cost per card, 99 cents. What are you guaranteed to get in a box? Well, you're going to get three autos. 24 refractors you will get two of the 20 for 20 inserts one applied pressure ins insert 
four franchise futures inserts, four glimpses of greatness inserts, and one of those cool top of the class box toppers. Or you can choose the Super Jumbo format. Now that is only going to give you five packs, but they have 120 cards in each pack. So 600 total cards. Current price on those is about $540. And your cost per card is actually only 90 cents, giving it the lowest cost per card format but you are guaranteed to get five different autos. You do get 40 refractors and overall you will end up with 165 different Chrome cards. So you really got to choose. Are you looking for the inserts? Are you looking for more of the parallels? Probably want to go hobby HTA. If you're chasing autos, super jumbo was the way to go. So what are the key cards? This is a huge deal for Bowman Draft, a much bigger deal than in some of the other set releases throughout the year. So here's what we're going to be chasing in 2020 Bowman Draft. First of all, the base cards. You've got Robert Hassel, who was uh, most of these players are going to be first round draft picks, high first round draft picks. He was drafted by the Padres. You've got Max Meyer of the Marlins. You've got Nick Gonzalez of the Pirates. Asa Lacey of the Royals. Zach Veen of the Rockies, Spencer Torkelson of the Tigers, number one pick overall, and then Heston Jerstad of or Kerstad of the Orioles at um, card number 122. For the parallels, autos, uh, short prints, relics, all that type of stuff, um, the big chase is going to be those chrome autos. They're often the key card of future players. When you think about really expensive cards that you see that are from like nine, 10 years ago, um, these are the cards in the set that you would be pulling them from. The image variation cards, very popular. They're back once again. There are autoed versions and non-autoed versions. And then there are also draft night autos. There's not very many of them. There's seven different players, I believe. Um, but those are highly sought after. And then the orange refractors this year, they're only available in the hobby format. They're all numbered to 25. Then we also have the Under Armour game. That is a game that is played, uh, I believe that game was actually played in late 2019. Uh, but there are autos from that game from a lot of the players that were drafted. And then we also have the Applied Pressure insert, which is the hardest insert to pull. Some of those are autos. And by the way, the autos are a die cut card. Then finally, we have the top of the class box toppers, which those also are only available in hobby. Pretty cool addition to this year's set. So those are going to be our key cards. Now, here's the parallel breakdown for the paper set. You're going to have a nine color rainbow, sky blue, purple, blue, green, gold. The orange is again, hobby only. And then you get a red of to five, a black one of one. And of course, you get the printing plates uh, for a total of those. When we go over to the chrome set, we get a refractor, um, and then we also get a sky blue, which is exclusive to hobby. So you're going to get one of those in every hobby box. You got a purple refractor, a sparkle refractor. Maybe it's called speckle. I think I wrote sparkle, and I meant to write speckle. Uh, but you've got a blue refractor, green, gold, orange, which is hobby only, red, super refractor, and printing plates. So you pull a super refractor of a Bowman first, hold on to it could be really valuable later on. So let's cover off on the inserts. Uh, pretty cool inserts for this year, in my opinion. You've got the 20 for 20, which you can see over there on the right. Uh, parallel breakdown, you can see basically refractor, green, gold, red, and super refractor. The applied pressure has 10 cards in it. Um, and then that has the only atomic refractor that you're going to find anywhere in Bowman Draft this year. And then it also has that orange to 25. Anything orange is going to be hobby only. Just remember that um, if you're looking for to, uh, cards number to 25, you want to buy the hobby format because you aren't going to find any in the Super Jumbo format. Then you also have the Franchise Futures insert. That's a 20-card set, and that also has the standard parallel breakdown that you can see on screen. Then we have the Glimpses of Greatness, which is new for this year. That's got 15 cards, a five-color rainbow parallel as well. And don't forget, you do get the base set image variations. There's going to be 15 cards in that. And then finally, the top of the class oversized box toppers, 12 different cards. They're all numbered to 99, uh, but you can get parallels of gold, red, and super fractor. So now we dig into the autographs. First, 
you're going to have the Chrome Pick autographs. And actually, before I even begin that, I want to apologize for the card that's shown on screen, but they do not have a lot of pictures of the Bowman Draft cards yet. So I'm using the ones that were in the sell sheet. And this is one that was in the sell sheet. So that kind of gives you any idea of what the uh, applied pressure auto is going to look like. Um, however, um, getting back on track so the chrome draft pick autos these are the ones that are so popular there's 118 different cards most of these are going to be bowman first cards on card autos a big time parallel rainbow you can see that on the screen one thing to note in there is you do have the black to 75 which is also only available in hobby then you have the 20 and 20 autos, nine cards in that, 90 numbered to 99 or less with a small red and super fractor parallel. And then the applied pressure, which is what you see over there on the right. Um, those are going to be orange, red, and super fractor as well. And then you also have the class of 2020 autos, 31 cards, um, each numbered to 250. And you can see they've got a gold, orange, red, and super fractor parallel rainbow. And then we have the draft night autos. Uh, these are really cool. They've got seven cards only, high draft picks, very nice, uh, very nice subset checklist. They're each going to be numbered to 99, but you can get a few parallels of these gold, orange, red, and super fractor. You've got the franchise futures autos, tried and true format for Bowman draft, eight cards in that, each numbered to 99 with a parallel rainbow as well. And then the image variations, those you can find autoed, uh, autoed as well. They will all be uh, numbered to 99. And then finally, the box toppers can also be autographed. There's going to be eight cards in that autograph subset, and they'll each be numbered to 35. Oh, and then we do have one more. I forgot. The Under Armour game autos, there's going to be five cards in that set. They will each be numbered to 199. So... With all that being said, which teams should you be targeting in breaks? And this actually is a lot different than a lot of breaks that you've been in. If you've been breaking with uh, breakers all throughout 2020, uh, Bowman Draft steers so far to the right. Um, and it's because there is only prospects in the set. That's the only thing you're going to find. So you really got to know who was drafted. You really got to know what teams were drafting, what sort of positions to kind of know who's going to hold future value. So pay attention here because some of these teams are probably going to surprise you. First of all, the best team. This is probably the one that isn't a surprise. The Detroit Tigers. There are only seven base cards, but there are 12 autos. That's a lot of autos compared to most teams. There are seven different inserts. And the big chase card for Bowman Draft out of the blocks is going to be that Spencer Torkelson card, number one pick overall. Um, so the best team, as usual with Bowman Draft, is going to be whoever has the number one draft pick. That's going to be Spencer Torkelson. And so we start with the Detroit Tigers being the best team out of the blocks for 2020 Bowman Draft. Now, who has the most autos in the set? That's going to be the Kansas City Royals. And they have 10 different base cards, 13 different autos, and nine inserts. And don't forget, they were the ones that drafted Asa Lacy. Asa Lacy is probably the top pitching prospect in the draft. Um, and so he's got a ton of different autos in here, a very valuable team. The Kansas City Royals are a great team to get. A solid choice to get. This might surprise some people. I'm picking the Baltimore Orioles. Um, they do have the second pick overall in Heston Kerstad. Um, they've got seven base cards, nine different autos, and eight inserts. But also, when you look at that auto checklist, the reason why I think they're a really solid choice is they actually have Adley Rutschman autos in there. He was the number one pick from last year's draft. So you've got a chance at the number one pick in 2019, the number, the, uh, number two pick in the 2020 draft. Just a great, great checklist for the Orioles. So a solid choice to get there. But who holds the most value? I think it's going to be the Colorado Rockies because the Rockies, um, I don't think are going to be like a top five team off the board. I think you can get them a little bit lower if you're buying the Rockies outright in a break. Um, they have eight different base cards. They've got 10 different autos, six different inserts in one of the top prospects 
in Zach Veen. I believe he was drafted eight, eighth or ninth overall. I can't remember. I think it's ninth. Um, but Zach Veen is a monster, big prospect for the Rockies um, and a very, very solid choice there. He's got plenty of different autos in this. They've got all sorts of different Bowman first cards on the checklist. So the Rockies, I think, because of the price that you're going to be able to get them at and the potential for future return, the Rockies are going to be a fantastic value in this year's set. But I'm also going to give you a couple sleepers. First sleeper, the Chicago Cubs. The Chicago Cubs, by most people, by most pundits, um, uh, by most pundits, they said the Cubs had a great draft. Um, there are seven different base cards. There's nine different autos and five relics. So I think the Cubs are going to fall a little bit under the radar, but they did have a very solid draft. Most of those players that they drafted are in this set. Uh, Ed Howard is one of them. That's actually one of the people that I am targeting in this set, one of the prospects I'm targeting. So the Chicago Cubs are going to be a sleeper. I don't think that they will even be a top 10 most expensive team. If you hit them in a break or if you, or, or if you want to trade for them in a, in a random team break, I think you're going to do great with the Chicago Cubs. And then my other sleeper team is going to be the Tampa Bay Rays. Why? Well, they've got 11 different base cards. They've got more base cards than I think any other team in the set. Um, so just an abundance of cards for them. They do have nine different autos. They had a decent draft. They only have two inserts, but that's okay. Um, again, I don't think the Tampa Bay Rays are going to be even in the top half, a great team to maybe trade for, um, a great team to kind of buy low on, on, on some of the breaks that you'll be getting into. So my sleepers, the Cubs and the Rays. So with all that being said, who should be collecting Bowman draft? It almost seems like everyone should, but I think there's a certain, there's a few certain categories of people that really should target in on Bowman draft. Obviously the first one going to be prospect chasers. It's the most valuable set for draft class cards in any given year. Uh, Bowman baseball focuses more on the internet, on the international draft, which holds a ton of value. But if you're looking for the MLB draft, players coming out of college, prep players coming out of the um, uh, up the American pipeline. Uh, this is the most valuable set for those players. And then also, big hit chasers. Look, if you get a low-numbered auto or a parallel, they can be so extremely valuable. The hardest thing to do is to actually hold on to them long enough. Um, you, but if you do, you get them graded, you hold on to them. Some of these cards uh, can end up being absolute monsters later on down the road. And that's why the next people obviously going to be speculators. Uh, some people might call them flippers, but it is, I, I, I don't blame people for buying this stuff. It's one of the most set, safe sets to speculate on in the 2020 card season. Um, but I also feel the individual card hunter. So if you're only chasing, say, a Spencer Torkelson, or say you're going after Zach Veen, or um, any of the other prospects, I do think that many of the individual cards are going to be very fairly priced on the secondary market after the initial rush is over. So maybe don't go out and buy it, you know, Tuesday morning. But if you wait till after the new year, after the set uh, hype has kind of died down a little bit, a lot of these cards come down in value initially, especially during the off season. So if you're looking for some of those individual prospects, you could probably find some good deals on some of the parallel cards. You could probably find some good deals on some of the autos. You hold on to them, see what happens later on. So individual card hunters, this is definitely a set for you. And then also, if you're someone that just collects your favorite team, you got to collect at least your, your team on this because it's got all of the brand new draftees, um, for, for your team. So your latest additions, your newest prospects, you add them to your team collection. It's a great set for that. And then most importantly, the seasoned hobbyists. This is a set for you guys. Um, you need to have experience in collecting prospects to know which teams that you're going to target in this set. There are so many people that are novice collectors that get into this and get lost and spend a lot of money and don't end up realizing what they do have or end up selling stuff. And it's just a very unapproachable set unless you're a seasoned hobbyist. Seasoned hobbyists love this set. So who shouldn't be collecting 2020 Bowman draft? Well, first of all, 
If you like going out in retail and chasing retail, which has been more difficult in 2020 than it ever has below, uh, th than it ever has before, um, this is not a set for you. There are no plans for a retail release that I can find. Uh, Bowman Chrome surprised us. It's possible that they maybe do mega boxes, but I doubt it for Bowman Draft. We'll see what happens. Tops has surprised us a little bit this year. Um, and like I was just saying, new and novice collectors, this is such a tempting product to collect and I get it, uh, but it can be very expensive if you don't know what you're doing with it and if you don't know who you're chasing. If you want to buy a box to get into it, I, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, but there's a, there's a certain way to collect Bowman Draft and it is not simply by um it's not simply by just buying as many packs as you can that is that that's gonna hurt you in the long run um and then if you like relics unfortunately there are no relics in this set for 2020 and if you like collecting hall of famers this is the exact opposite of hall of famers this is prospects only so if you're a hall of fame collector you like collecting a lot of those vintage and and older cards there's much better sets for that um, so this is definitely not one for you. There's not even any rookies in this set, which is why I put rookie chasers on here. Again, again, most importantly, don't forget there are no major league baseball players in this set. There are just people signed to major league teams hoping to make it to the bigs one day. And then finally, if you're a budget minded hobbyist, this is a very expensive entry point, uh, for a set that, uh, the cost per auto is fairly high. Um, the parallels are a little bit few and far between. Yes, there's a there's some speculation that you can do here, but if you're someone that's on a budget, uh, buying into some of the cheaper breaks that maybe you can find, probably not a bad idea, um, but going in and spending 350 bucks on a box um, and not knowing what you're going to get, that's just an expensive price point for a lot of budget-minded hobbyists. So I would recommend to steer clear. So the overall set positives, in my opinion, um, first of all, it's the most valuable cards of the new MLB draft prospects. That is the big draw on Bowman draft. Um, so some of these cards, as you know, like Mike Trout, for example, those these cards can end up being worth millions. 99.9% .9 of them aren't going to be Mike Trout, but there's a potential for cards to be worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars um, later on down the road. The other big positive, the 2020 uh, draft class was really deep. It was really strong. Unfortunately, a lot of these players didn't get to start playing in the minors Im immediately, but it is a nice draft class in 2020. It was, it's been rated as one of the best draft classes in a while for baseball. So it's a very good checklist. Um, and then I also like that it's Bowman this year has been on a quality card stock. The cards seem to hold up real well, very gradable cards. You pull them out of a pack. You're probably guaranteed to get an eight or at least an eight, most likely a nine and possibly a 10. Um, and then the other thing is I do like that they've made an incentive to buy both the formats, um, which was a little bit different than last year. So if you're chasing autos, you want to be chasing that super jumbo because you're going to get five of them. Your cost per card's a little bit lower. But if you like chasing parallels, like that orange to 25, the black, that box topper, uh, that hobby HTA really kind of is, a, is an attractive option. And then finally, for the insert sets this year, um, compared to Bowman Chrome, man, they did a much better job on the inserts. Um, the inserts in Bowman Draft, um, they mixed in a few new ones. They got some tried and true fa favorites in there. It's a very solid insert uh, checklist. So very nice job on the inserts this year. And then finally, um, these cards just historically hold extremely high long-term uh, resale value if these guys make it to the bigs. Um, cards can, cards just, Bowman draft generally appreciates over time and it appreciates nicely. Those are all very positive things, but there are some negatives of Bowman draft as well. The first thing, the high cost of entry point, we went over that. Um, a lot of collectors do not have $350 or $500 to drop on a box of cards. Um, and then uh, about the about the only way is to maybe buy a pack here and there, but even packs are going to be expensive this year. So if you can find some cheaper breaks, that's going to be a great way to go. And unfortunately, the prices are just inflated 
compared to years pat past. Um, these boxes last year were a little bit cheaper, and it was right around this time last year where all of the prices on boxes started going up, and that's where we've gotten to now, where everything is about on products like this, about double what it was last year. Um, unfortunately, right now, there are no retail options, so there's no way to kind of find these cheaper over in a Walmart or a Target. Um, and I always don't like it when there's not a relic in the set anywhere. I know relics aren't the most valuable, but they make for a nice they make for a nice little hit and they're kind of a fun thing to have. Um, and unfortunately, there aren't any in this set. Um, and then also, although the set checklist is really good, there are a key uh, the a key uh, players that have been left out. And they're holding him for 2021 Bowman. Uh, the most notable one is Austin Martin. He was drafted fifth overall. Um, it's not surprising that they did that, but I would like it when it was Bowman draft if they just put all of the first round draft picks in there and then took Bowman baseball in 2021 and focused it more on the international draft. Um, it would be kind of cool, like even if they called it Bowman International, um, but they haven't done that yet. So we'd miss a few of the draftees in Bowman draft, which has never made any sense to me. Um, and then finally, more and more Bowman is just becoming a flippers product. It's uh, the speculation uh, inflates the pricing and it's pushing a lot of collectors out, which is unfortunate because collectors are the bloodline. I've mentioned it a lot on my channel. Collectors of the bloodline. It is not the flippers. Um, and unfortunately, the flippers uh, hoard this product. They flock to it. And I understand why. So with all that being said, how does Bowman draft line up on the one cent sensational set rating? Well, let's take a look. Like I said, we break it down into 10 different categories. Um, so we'll start with appeal. First of all, Bowman draft. I don't think there is a more appealing set to the hobby. People chase these cards like you would not believe. Um, so the appeal, I got to go ahead and give it an absolute 10. It is probably the it, the most uh, appealing set, If and if not, it's definitely in the top three. Uh, the base checklist this year, I'm going to give it an 8.5. It's missing a couple names, but for the most part, uh, the fact that they've got drafts one, draft picks one through four, they're missing five but they've got most of them in there. It's a very strong draft class. Uh, lots of different Bowman first cards in this. So I give it an 8.5. The inserts this year, I think they did a great job on the inserts. I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8. For the parallels and variations, I'm going to drop that down to a 7. And the reason why is there are not any relics in this. So I'm, I'm not going to point or two off for having no relics, but the parallels are fantastic. The image variations, they've only got 15 different ones. Would have liked to maybe see in a couple more, but I get why they didn't do that. It's not terrible, um, but I, I feel like there's room for improvement there. So I'm going to give that a seven. The auto checklist, however, grew a lot of big names in this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8.5. It is a fantastic auto checklist. Just really strong. You've got everyone from Jason Dominguez in there, Spencer Torkelson, Asa Lacey, uh, Max Meyer. You've got all of the big You've got all of the big names from all of the teams that you would want. Uh, Reed Detmers, that's who I'm going to be chasing on the Angels. Uh, for your pack odds and productions, another nice thing about Bowman Draft being that it's only available in hobby, the pack odds come down a little bit too, which makes the cards a little bit more scarce uh, because the production is not as high. So I'm going to go ahead and give that an eight. Uh, card quality, Bowman has uh, tops this year has had a little bit of difficulty with centering um, and um, some production issues on cards, but for the most part, they haven't done a bad job. Uh, and the card stock that they're using, especially their chromium stock, um, is real, real nice. Very gradable cards. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give that an eight. And then for historical value, very few sets are worth more than Bowman draft down the line. Um, so when we look out to the future, uh, this is kind of one of the best sets. If you're looking to flip cards, this is one of the best sets to get. I'm going to go ahead and give that a 10. Uh, the artistic value, as I have said all year about Bowman, I do like this year's design. I like the borders. I love um, the a lot of the photography that they've used. So I'm going to go ahead and give that an eight. And then for cost value, 
I'm going to give it a 7.5. Don't like the fact that it's an expensive buy-in. However, it is one of the better sets for return on investment. And then later on down the line, it gets even better than that. So it's hard to knock the cost value when you look at future returns. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a 7.5. So when we add all those up, we're going to get a score here. And then we can rank this on a one to five star scale. So if it scores, you know, between 25 and 44, uh, not the greatest of sets, maybe more of a budget minded set, I would steer clear of them. Um, a three star set is a very solid set. A lot of people will like it. It's got appeal. Um, it's maybe missing a few holes or got some stuff that people can quibble about. Uh, but for the most part, a solid set. A four star set is a set that most collectors are going to love. Um, and uh, and collect and people will have a positive review on it and then a five star set is just a legendary set we actually have not had one five star set all season um, to date on this rating so a five star set would be a very rare set um, however i do think it's possible to get one so how did bowman draft line up well my final rating was an 80 3.5 so a very high four star set um just a fantastic set the i think what's going to drive bowman draft this year is the strength of the 2020 draft class um there are a lot of good potential players a lot of good prep players a lot of good college players that came out of the draft. It was a condensed draft. All of them signed with uh, all 160 players that were draft signed with their teams. And it just overall is such a strong draft class that I don't think Bowman 2020 can miss. Um, with with uh, Spencer Torkelson, he was a fantastic person um, to draft number one overall. Um, but there's so many other players, Asa Lacey, who everyone thought was going to go two, but he dropped a fourth. Um, there's solid pitchers, there's solid hitters. Um, and then when we look at Bowman and how they do this draft class with the parallels and everything on top of that, the card quality you're getting, um, the different buying formats, the fact that you can get autos and they're not extremely high uh, cost per auto, maybe a little bit higher than some other sets, but overall a set that you really, really can't go wrong with. So how does that Bowman draft set line up with all of our other sets to date in 2020? Well, it ranks number one on my list and it finally takes Bowman baseball, which was rated way back in June out of the top spot. It scores an 83.5 Bowman baseball was uh, 82. It sat there for over six months. Um, and as we wind down the 2020 card season, only a couple sets left to review out of 61 different sets that have come out so far, major sets that have come out so far this year. Bowman Draft takes the top spot late in the season. It did knock tops five star out of the top 10. Um, so our top 10 now looks like Bowman Draft, Bowman Baseball, Tops Chrome, Bowman Chrome, Tops Gypsy Queen, still one of my favorite sets of 2020, Panini Select, Panini Prism, Stadium Club, Bowman Sterling, and then Tops Finest. So in the comments below, let me know if you are getting into Bowman Draft. Um, if you like these reviews, throw over to first hit that like button for me. Be sure to subscribe because we do these reviews all the time. Um, and it, be sure to hit that bell so you can get this review right as it comes out. So you know who you should be getting in draft breaks before the set comes out. You know everything about it. So you're more informed to make better decisions with your pocketbook. On top of that, I hope if you are buying into Bowman Draft that you have fantastic luck and pull some of those great prospects that you can pull out of Bowman Draft. Um, and I hope that you're being good to your family, to your friends, and to your neighbors. And until next time, enjoy Bowman Draft, and we'll see you soon.